um, yep. Yeah. Uh, so this uh, talk is about you know identifying um, the failure of IoT sensor, which may be spread across your various uh, install locations, right? Um, so the scenario that I've tried to build together is, let's say you have you know multiple IoT sensor, which can be in the range of hundred or thousands of uh, sensors, right? Um, let's say you have they are spread across multiple factories. Um, each factory has multiple sections, and each section can have you know multiple sensors. For example, like temperature sensor, smoke sensor, uh, proximity sensor. Uh, now, in this particular demo, what I have uh, the data that is generated um, is for five factories. Each factory has six sections, and there are six different types of sensors which are spread across. And total sample size for the sensors is taken as 100 right so 100 sensors spread across these uh, uh, different factories now the telemetry for each of the sensor will be received at every five seconds now uh, this again uh, can vary uh, based on your own requirements your own field requirements that you have um, but the objective of the particular solution is that if let's say you have these many sensors out in the field and particular sensor fails to send a telemetry, how sooner can you identify that particular sensor and fix it, right? So in this particular case, it is a 20 second interval. So once the sensor stops sending a feed within a 20 second, we have to identify it. Now that 20 second is based upon since I have a five second interval between the telemetry. Uh, so that means I'm skipping three interval, three events uh, before I mark that particular sensor as a, as a failure. Now, the other thing about this one is we are not only marking the sensors of failure, but let's say you go ahead and fix that particular sensor and we start receiving the events again, um, then we should mark it as active, right? Um, and this should be instantaneous. Uh, there shouldn't be any delay on it. Um, and we will see how this, you know, uh, is these both objectives are met with this solution. I'll briefly show you the architecture first. Um, so. Uh, we are, this whole solution is built on uh, Google Dataflow, uh, which is a runner for Apache Beam. Uh, now the telemetry, which is uh, simulated using a data generator, um, and that telemetry is captured at a PubSub. Uh, then with the PubSub, uh, the data is received with the data flow. And data flow is nothing but Apache Beam, right? Uh, runner for Apache Beam. We use that Apache Beam program uh, to identify a particular failed sensor, right? And we'll see how that, uh, what that logic is in a, in a next slide. But once we identify that uh, particular sensor has failed or not, that status of the sensor is sent into the YSQL. Now, YSQL is a Yugabyte. Uh, SQL is the Cassandra side of uh, Yugabyte. And SQL is the SQL side of uh, Yugabyte, right? Now, Yugabyte is a, if you're not aware, it's a multimodal database. That means it helps us to store data in non NoSQL as well as SQL in the same instance, right? So we don't have to provision two instances to store the data. So that's, that's why it is used here. But if you, let's say, for example, you want to use any other relational database uh, in this particular case, you can uh, very well use that. Uh, now, the idea is the dashboarding on the Grafana is uh, real time based on the data that we are receiving in the SQL side of Yugabyte DB. Right? So, this is a flow. Uh, data is uh, received on the PubSub. From PubSub, we use the data flow to process uh, the events, identify which sensor has failed or not, that is sent to the YSQL in the relational side. And then from there, we uh, use a Grafana dashboard to show you the status in a real time. Now, if you, from this onward, if you want to, let's say, set up some alerting, you can do that as well. Uh, on the YSQL side, which is a NoSQL, uh, that data is stored uh, just to say that if you want to do any historical analytics on it, uh, you can do that as well, right? But now let's look at a solution. What is the logic behind identifying a failed, uh, uh, a failed uh, uh, sensor? Right. So before before we uh, look at that, there is a state and timer uh, which help us to. Uh, it's a feature in a beam, which help us to build a stateful uh, processing right in the Apache beam. Now, in this particular case, before you use those two feature, we have to make sure that we are using uh, our data stream is a key value pair. Right. It it cannot be 
uh, without any key. Now, this is a good for us because in our case, the sensor ID has become our key and each data point that is coming from that particular sensor is the value. Now, let's say key one is the sensor one, key two is the sensor two. Well, once we receive those events, uh, there are two actions we have to do, right? Uh, we have to store the last event that has come in uh, from that particular sensor, right? So we say that this is the event that has come at a particular duration and we store that, right? The historical event, the last uh, historical event. And we also need a timer which will tell us when that last event came in so that we can take some action uh, based on the elapsed time, right? So these two are the uh, features of Beam that we are going to use uh, in identifying those sensors, right? And let's see how this feature is utilized. So here you can see the actual solution, uh, how we have utilized the feature. Um, so these different colors are, you can, Think of them as a different sensors which are sending you uh, the events at a particular um, time, right? So these blue one is the first event that comes from this sensor. Now, what we do is when the first event comes in, uh, we set a timer uh, on the in the beam, right? The timer is set in a future, and in this particular case, it is set at a timer of 15 seconds. Now, what this timer has to do, once it goes off, it will go ahead and mark that particular sensor as failed, right? So this is this is the this is the action that timer will do, right? So once the event comes in, it will set a timer, and once the timer goes off, that event will actually mark that sensor as a failed one. But now the thing is, if the new event from that particular sensor comes in, we move that timer by that particular delta, right? So since in our case every event is coming at a five second interval this timer will keep shifting in into the future right every five seconds as as and when the events are coming in so that means that event that timer will never go off but let's say a sensor fails and if the sensor fails there is nothing to shift that timer and that means that timer will then go off and set an event which will then trigger and set the status of that particular sensor to fail, right? So this is the logic behind it, right? So as long as the events are coming in, our timer will keep moving, but once the events stop, our timer will go off and set the event as a, a status of the sensor as a failed one, right? So now um, let's uh, quickly look at a demo. Um, so we can switch to the uh, demo uh, slide. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'll just, so let's look at a dashboard first. The dashboard will look something like this, right? So right now there is no data being generated. So you have a total sensor zero, there is nothing failed. Uh, we will also have a differentiation of, you know, uh, of how many sensors have failed and what the types of sensors have failed, uh, which factory has at per section, how many sensors have failed and uh, other things, right? The total number of sensors. So now let's start the generator. So this is a data generator which is going to send every five second, 100 or so events, right? So in this case, we have generated 99 um, sensors simulated and this will start sending the data now. Right. So as soon as the events are going in, you will see that some of the sensors are being marked as failed, right? The, here the stopped source means those particular sensors are being marked as fail. So let's go ahead and look at the dashboard. Uh, now you see that there are total 99 sensors we have created. Uh, there is one sensor which has failed. Now you will see a little bit of lag between what is happening at the back end and what is what you see on a dashboard, right? Uh, but this is the reason because there is a 15 second of delay that we have put in intentionally, right? So once the, once the source or the sensor stops, we wait for 15 seconds before we actually mark it as a fail, right? So now let's look at the first one which you see on a dashboard, 6903. Uh, this will be somewhere here, right? 6903 that we have seen here, right? This is the event that is marked as failed. Uh, but if you look at 3709, which has just been identified as a failed case right now, uh, we can look at the screen and 3709 should come in in about 10, 15 seconds here. So I'll wait. 
So here is one triple three. Yeah, so you see that 3709 has, has been marked as a fail. Now you can see it on a dashboard. Now we can do other thing as well. We can go ahead and mark this particular sensor as active. Let's say we have go ahead and fix it. So 3709, I'll go ahead and mark it as, as, a, as a fixed sensor now. So Right, so we should see that 3709 should go away in some time. Hopefully I've got the number correct. Right, so you see that 3709 is no longer marked as a fail, right? So we have take, we have fixed that particular uh, sensor, right? So this is how this uh, system will work, right? You can see the different uh, uh, layouts or different you know breakups you can see uh, failed sensor types you can do that it's all real time now uh, which factory has got the most failed uh, sensors fail you can filter on those as well um, where the sensors have failed and how many are the maximum ones right for example this set factory number four has the most uh, number of failed sensors and this is the whole list of sensors which have failed right so this is so this is a quick demo and explanation of the solution, how you can go ahead and uh, use Beam's uh, state and uh, timer to uh, solve this particular problem. Uh, thanks uh, for the interest and thanks for the demo, guys. So that's it uh, uh, from me. Uh, that was a quick and short demo and a talk. Any questions, I can take those. Oh, 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 oh,